Hi everyone and welcome to Planet Zoo. Today we're back in the Simple Habitat Zoo and we're going to take a look at the brand new eight enclosures that I've made for the North America DLC animals. Well, I say eight, it's actually seven because I very rarely do anything with the exhibit boxes. So yeah, seven DLC brand new habitats for us to look at. Quick note about the Simple Habitat series if you're new here. This is basically a set of very simple, easy to find, easy to use habitats that I've uploaded to the Steam Workshop. Key to it being simple is that they're all rectangles, so they're easy to load in and use with the pattern system. Uh, there's no DLC needed for any of these habitats. I've used base game pieces only to build them and also used the non-theme pieces because sometimes you have to unlock the theme in if you're early in the game as well. So literally these can be used as soon as you get into the game. About the only thing with these that you will need to unlock is you need to learn some of the habitat gates for the various ones that need a heavier gate. Also, I tend to use this log wall quite a lot and that's a grade three wall. So you might have to research up to grade three for the walls for these type of ones. And also if there's an animal that's quite dangerous, sometimes they have requirements that you need to have a grade four, five or six, like durability on the wall. So you might need to research those as well. But that's pretty much it. I've tried to make these as simple as possible for new and returning players to be able to get straight into the game, download one of these habitats and you're good to go. So yeah, that's the gist of it. And these are the brand new seven ones I've made for the new South America DLC. We'll start off with the American alligator. So space wise, I'd say this is about a medium sized habitat. And if we take a look at the stats here, you can see I am right on the line of going of the green line. So any less space than this, and that would be like a, an orange, which is a warning sign that you've not got enough space for your animals in there. So I've tried to make this so that it's as small as possible, but it's still covering all of their needs, which is what I tend to aim for for most of these habitats. I go for the maximum number of animals that you can have in them and then try and get them to go green. As for the decorations, now with the simple habitat series, I try not to go overboard with the decorations. I don't want to just present people with like an empty box because that's just boring. So I will put in the required number of plants and fauna and things. And we do have the hard shelter and everything covered. Basically, I make sure that the habitats are good to go. So you don't have to mess around with the terrain or anything like that. Oh, the only thing I've changed up since I first did the habitat series, I've stopped putting in the containers for food because it was starting to mess up. Sometimes people were downloading it and it was saying it was locked and it was because there was a there was a meat container there or like a tray for food and stuff like that so if the animals need water if they haven't got a pond i'll put the water pump in but that's it i don't put anything to do with enrichment or food or anything like that in the habitats now because it started messing up and people weren't able to unlock them so they're absolutely completely basic now <laughs> I say basic, but I've worked hard on this habitat to make it look like it's from the region where the animal's meant to be. So it's all swampy and everglady. Uh, we've got the right colour water in and the hard shelter here. So yeah, I've made this out of basic pieces and I was fishing around for stuff that kind of looked a bit run down and you can imagine this being in a swamp. Basically, I've used, I think it was animal doors and it kind of looked like a rusty container anyway. So I've used those to make a habitat out of that. And obviously we've got the corrugated iron sheets at the top. And I think it looks pretty, pretty nice, especially when the alligators are in there asleep. Looks quite funny. So yeah, basic, but I still like to maintain a little bit of design integrity when I'm making these things. Right, let's move on and take a look at the Arctic Fox habitat. So the Arctic Foxes don't need quite as much room as the alligators, so a little bit smaller. Again, I've got this right on the line of it being in the green. So this is the minimum amount of space really you need for maximum amount of foxes in one enclosure for them to be happy. Now, for a while now, I've been scratching my head a little bit about what to do with the small animals because they still need hard shelters. And the problem is the hitboxes on the animals is still quite big, even if they're a tiny animal. So for a long time now, I've been trying to figure out what can I do to make a hard shelter that looks good, but isn't overwhelming because these are tiny little creatures. 
and giving them a huge shelter like this one over here is no good because it just it overpowers them so much it loses all definition of the animal itself but i think i finally cracked it i am really pleased with this little hard shelter i've made here for the foxes i think it's super cute and it's also something that you might find in an actual zoo being able to make something like this out of the unseen pieces and completely base game pieces i'm really proud of it to be honest so how this works you've got the little sleeping compartments here and there's like two levels to this and it's so adorable because they do sleep on both levels i've made sure that they can access both parts otherwise it'd be pointless wouldn't it and they've got this little window here as well to let in a bit of light it's quite cozy nice and comfortable and quite a cold biome for the foxes that they live in so having a nice little snuggly shelter like this i think it's brilliant around the open side there's just a little space here for the foxes to sit in and you've got that little barrier in between because the foxes can get quite intimidated by guests so you want to give them little areas that they can get away from them i'd have to wait and see what happens when you've got a lot of guests around because if they're still getting a bit frightened you might want to replace this with a non-see-through cover i've managed to get the water thing under here as well so that's good because i know it's not realistic but you'd want the water covered by something in a cold biome so that when it's snowing or whatnot then the water's at least protected from that so yeah i'm pleased with it but rest of this habitat now i really don't know what to do with the foxes because they really don't need anything they they have very little requirement for vegetation in their enclosure but it kind of looks a bit weird if you don't have anything in there so i've added a couple of rocks and i've added a few little bushes here and there again it's not necessary to have that if you wanted to take that out to use this then i'm sure that'd be absolutely fine i just felt the need to have something in there yeah and that's kind of similar with our next habitat which is the prairie dogs prairie dogs are like from the plains sort of biomes so really this should be flat and very sparse and just lots of gravelly dirt that sort of thing maybe some dry brush plants or something the problem is base game doesn't really give you a lot of options when we got the i think it was australia dlc we got a huge number of brilliant deserty dry biome plants and also in the the south africa dlc we got another set of really good plants to use that really help boost up these sort of biomes and habitats unfortunately with the base game plants for the kind of plains and grassland biomes you don't get a lot of options with it so i kind of made do with what i've got here that looked okay with the prairie dogs being even smaller than the arctic foxes i have shamelessly used the same hard shelter for them as well and i think as a test the hard shelter here this does work really well for the small animals so i may even upload this to the workshop as a exclusive item alone and just say if you've got small animals use this it kind of looks better so that's our prairie dogs done uh next we're up to the californian sea lion and i think this is my favorite out of the new collection of habitats that i've done for some reason i do really enjoy making the aquatic habitats and i think it's because you get a bit more flexibility to make something that looks a little more man-made nobody expects zoos to be making huge massive natural looking pools and the ones that do they're heralded as these millions upon millions of pound projects that just seems crazy to me for a little zoo like this then i think something like this is a lot more realistic but i do love messing around with the shapes of these huge pools and for this one the sea lions are completely happy in this environment they've actually got a lot more land than they need and i kind of went with that for the aesthetics of having the double side of the land so you've got one part of the land where the, the shelter is and then you've got the you've got the pool and then the other side you've got this little bit of space that i imagine if you were working on this and you had it in your zoo you might want to take out all this rock work and you might want to put the food containers down there so that when the sea lions get fed then the guests are really close to where they're getting fed there as far as the hard shelter goes i was so pleased when i remembered that we've got this um this wood slotted floor piece and i'd completely forgotten about this one because when i first got the game and we were all stuck with the base game pieces i just dismissed it because i was thinking well this is a stupid piece because it's got holes in between it so you couldn't really use it as a hard shelter because poor animals are just going to get wet 
but in an aquatic setting this worked super well so glad i remembered that this was a piece for the inside of the hard shelter so i've tried to make this look like it was maybe a trailer so maybe a mobile home trailer or something like that and it's been converted into a hard shelter and it's kind of i've done it that way because it's cheap to make it's durable um if it gets weathered after a couple of years it probably wouldn't be that difficult to just replace it entirely these sort of prefabricated buildings are used for this sort of setting all the time and with these big huge windows in here like this the sea lions just seem to love it they always tend to go for these beds first and it's kind of like they're choosing these because they're in the sun well <laughs> i know the game doesn't know that but it's it's cute anyway and i love it when they do they're all sleeping in here and there's the little ones just on their beds in the sun like that it looks really good so yeah i think this is the best habitat that i've done for this new set of seven let me know if you agree in the comments anyway let's move on to the cougar habitat to be honest this habitat's fairly big compared to some of the other big cat habitats that we've had before and honestly yes i have used a little bit of rock work in here to brighten it up a little bit and that does add to the space a little bit because if they can't traverse over it it just cancels out so you might notice that if you're building your own habitats that you go hang on the, you look at the door and it says that it's big enough and you was like well why is the animal complaining about it and if you check the, the area that they're able to traverse it could very well be that you've got a lot of space there that's unusable because they struggle to get over the rocks sometimes for the hard shelter here i've reused one of the simple habitat hard shelters that i made before i can't remember which animal it was for hang on let me look uh, there we go that is arctic wolf so yeah another another cold climate animal there although from looking at the map cougars are pretty prolific in a lot of places another cool thing about the cougars that you do have to watch out for they will climb the trees that you put into the enclosure so you have to be super careful that these kind of trees with the big trunks the big meaty trunks on them they'll climb up those and jump over the wall so make sure you don't put any of these trees close to the wall because they will be escaping it is funny actually when i first made this enclosure um see these bits at the side now i put the, i put these like hard blocks at the side of these enclosures because the way the game is with the barriers the ground underneath the barrier is solid because of the way the the programming works with the barriers so this kind of space either side of it if you lower the ground or you put the ground higher this bit underneath the barrier will always remain constant so to hide that i tend to put these big blocks at either side just to stop you know the animals getting through to the side where the gate is where people's hands are going to be <laughs> anyway normally i have these blocks a lot lower but i set all this exhibit up and put the cougars in and within 30 seconds one of them had jumped onto this rock here and had jumped straight onto the block there and over the wall so i had to raise the wall up and i had to raise the blocks up a little bit to stop them doing that i've checked and it's all fine now no cougars can escape all naughty cougars are well contained <laughs> but one to watch out for they can jump super high that's really everything for the cougars so let's move on to the moose enclosure so the land requirements for the moose is absolutely huge it's the hugest i've seen for so few animals at most you're gonna have two females and one male moose in here and obviously a couple of babies if you're mating them and that's it and they need all this land just for that so i do struggle a little bit with exhibits like this that it's quite sparse i've got the trees in there i could have gone around and put a heap load of bushes in but i don't think that looks great either plus you're actually making the situation worse because bushes will take up an awful lot of real estate within the enclosure so you're kind of just making the situation worse by putting loads of vegetation in anyway about the only thing i've probably made worse here is the moose don't need this much water they only need like a really tiny pool of water which looks stupid when you've got this much land next to it so i have increased the water capacity quite a bit to make this little sort of stream it just balances it out a little bit they do seem to enjoy having a little swim about in it as well so at least you get to enjoy the moose enjoying and having a bit of a swim too the hard shelter i've got in here again this is all custom made all base game pieces so yeah all my own creation 
the moose really love this. They are always running into here, which is really sweet. Yeah, they really enjoy it. It's big enough for the three of them. Although big Mr. Moose, he does struggle a little bit with his horns getting in there. He just about manages to get through. Aside from that, there's really not a lot to say about the moose enclosure. So let's move on to our final exhibit today. And that is the North American beaver. I did enjoy making this habitat because it's just that little bit different. Beavers obviously have very distinctive behaviours that they play out, so building their little dams and its instinctive behaviour. They are apparently really destructive in the wild because even if they don't need it, they can't help but continue to cut at trees. It's just what they do in the wild. So I've mimicked that a little bit over here with the... Um, some of the dead birch trees and some of the tree stumps so they've already cut down those birch trees and i like that it just adds a little something to this enclosure the other fun part of this they have got their own little waterfront log cabins here that i made now i've got two of these and that was i originally wanted two because i've got one up front for the more boisterous beavers and then there's one at the back for any timid beavers that want a bit of quiet from where all the humans are Originally, though, these cabins were half the size that they are now, so it was only this front bit. Unfortunately, the beavers complained to the management about the size of the real estate, that it wasn't big enough for them, so I added the back bits here so that the beavers would stop complaining about space. <laughs> They're the only animals so far in this build that have complained about the hard shelters not being big enough for them. As for the size of everything in this habitat, it is very tight. I have got it all to go green, but it's right on the marker so if you do fill this to capacity with the i think you can have four female and four male beavers if they all start having little baby beavers you may start pushing into the amber color to say oh you're getting a bit tight on space amber should still be very happy with amber it's not the worst thing in the world but just fair warning that if you are going to have maximum capacity beavers in the enclosure you may start running into space issues eventually so that's all seven enclosures. If you do want to download any of these, they are now all uploaded to the Steam Workshop. You can find them under the Simple Habitat series. There's also a link to that pinned in the comments below. So go enjoy, download them all, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.